uh, another type of important database are databases of interaction and pathways. And if you recall your old biochemistry, the way many biological functions occur is by one enzyme or one uh, complex or one machinery takes a compound and produces something else out of it. And these are often described as molecular pathways. You know the the Krebs cycle, for instance, or other pathways described by um, molecular reactions. So this is one type of pathway. That doesn't really mean that two proteins physically interact, but it's a type of interaction by compounds. So one of these databases is the Keg pathway database, and that's um, uh, present in the Japanese website. Uh, and here you see actually the molecular pathways that are present there. So if you go to this website, you see something like this. And you can see here, you can see all the different enzymes, polysmides. You can look at the carbohydrate, you can click on one thing here, and you get a sub part of it. And you can see exactly how things are involved there. And of course, you can also extract this to, to a computer readable form. So this is very useful if you want to describe what type of reactions are occurring. And the nice thing about it is that this actually most of it is done is a condensation of many, many years of uh, biochemical knowledge. So this is quite useful. Another type of that with a really physical interaction of proteins interact. And this has been done studies a lot of how proteins interact and what type of proteins interact. And there are also what type of features are causing interactions. So in some way you can see that basically all proteins are never more than one interaction away because all proteins are have been interacting with the ribosome and so everything has just two steps of interaction. Interaction A, protein A interacts with the ribosome and protein B interacts with the ribosome, so they're never more than two steps away. But in general, you, the, the, the way to describe interactions is often more direct physical interaction, ignoring things like interacting with the ribosome. So you can see this and you can have different, if you study this, you see it often that you end up with mod modular networks. We'll discuss this much more later in the, in the paper, but you have you interact with modules that are interacting and, and often it's called hubs, the proteins that interact with many, many other proteins. So you have interaction hubs and they have different features, etc. One of the best databases for this is the string database. So in the string database, you can very easily access um, data that indicates the for interaction. As you can see here to the right, you have this data occurs from many different types of experiments. There are also pure predictions for genomic context. For instance, two proteins, two genes are close to each other in the genome are more likely to interact than two proteins or not. But also high throughput experimental data, they are uh, co-expression data, so basically means that two proteins are expressed in the same type of the cell cycle, for instance, are more likely to listen. And there are also data obtained from the previous knowledge, we e the other papers that are obtained from string text mining. So if you go to the string database, you can for instance find the protein like this LAF 0609 and um, or 0610. That is very likely to interact with 0609, so there's a 97% probability of interacted. And you can see that to write it has a neighborhood score, and but also some text mining data that supports it. But there's also 0608, another protein, and also has a text mining data. And then there's another other genes, they're all the left genes and the CoA genes that have lower scores. Um, that have about 70%, 6% chance of correct interactions, and they form like a module together. But there are also other databases, for instance, BI, there are biomodels in diet, react form, and RIA. So these are uh, other types of data, interactions that are, needs to be, can be used for studying interactions.